Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron Cohen Gadola. I'm a neurosurgeon. Today I'd like to talk to you about meningiomas. These are certain class of brain tumors that are most often benign. For the past 20 years I have been involved in surgical treatment of more than thousands of patients suffering from this tumor. And it's really an honor for me to be with you today to discuss the management of these tumors uh, as related to patients. Let's just jump to the most frequently asked questions about these tumors. How common are meningiomas? Meningiomas represent about 30% of primary brain tumors. In other words, tumors that originate within the skull. And what uh, about these meningiomas makes them more benign or cancerous? First of all, most importantly, 90% of meningiomas are benign. In other words, they're not cancerous. That is extremely important to know, and it's a great news for patients suffering from meningiomas. These tumors do not typically invade the surrounding tissues within the brain, and therefore can be very much amenable to uh, surgical resection, and surgery therefore can be um, typically curative. How are the meningiomas normally found? Um, up to 3% of the patients or people older than 60 may have an asymptomatic meningioma. That means many people walking around do have a meningioma, but they don't know about it, especially if they're on an older range of, uh, of age. They're typically asymptomatic, and these meningiomas are commonly observed uh, and no surgical treatment is required. How effective is surgery? Surgery is really the primary modality for treatment of these tumors. The surgery offers excellent tumor control and outcome, provides the patient with a very long lifespan, and um, the better outcomes are associated with a gross total tumor resection. In other words, all the tumor that are observed during the surgery can be removed. The 10-year survival rate for non-malignant tumors is over um, 80%. That means that if a patient has a meningioma and if they, are on, they have undergone good surgery, their lifespan is very much long and favorable. Let's go into more details. What is a meningioma? These tumors have cells that arise from the meninges. What are the meninges? They are protective membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Again, these tumors are benign. They comprise about 95% of brain tumors. They are rarely cancerous. Only 10% are cancerous. That can be recurring faster than benign meningiomas and lead to additional problems. These tumors, as you can see in this image, push the brain that are around them away and do not invade them. Again, this characteristic makes the resection very favorable. Who are the people at risk? Adult patients between ages of 40 and 70, and less than 2% of meningiomas occur in children. Women can be especially vulnerable to these tumors because of their hormones that are known to play a role in formation and growth of meningiomas. High body mass index, in other words, obesity can be associated uh, uh, with the formation and growth of the tumor. And also history of radiation for leukemia or other disease processes many years ago can lead to formation of higher grade meningiomas. What are the symptoms that you can expect if you have a meningioma? They depend on the size, location, and the rate of the growth of the meningioma. Small meningiomas are asymptomatic, and again, nothing needs to be done about them. The uh, slow growth rate often leads to subtle changes over time, and because of these subtle changes, the patient often presents with a very large tumor that they never knew about. They are, uh, symptoms are uh, commonly as a result of increased intracranial pressure. In other words, the tumor in, enlarges, pushes all the normal structures away, and leads to pressure because the skull is a closed space, and it, any growth within it will lead to an increased pressure within it. The pressure applied to the brain and the nerves obviously will cause the symptoms related to the location 
of the tumor. What are the typical symptoms related from a meningioma? There are seizures, worsening headaches, problem with memory, balance or hear difficulties, problem with eyesight or visual changes, numbness or weakness in the arm or leg, confusion, personality changes, even swallowing difficulty, and also build of a fluid or hydrocephalus within the brain. How are they diagnosed? First and foremost is clinical history and physical examination. The surgeon or your neurologist or family doctor will evaluate the history of your symptoms and also do a physical exam regarding your cognition, hearing, reflexes, vision, and your movement. There are also radiological evaluation, such as magnetic resonance imaging or an MRI that evaluates the soft tissue, the location, the size of the tumor, and its candidacy for surgery. And also, there are other modalities that can be used like a CT scan or com a computerized tomography where the bone is evaluated more effectively to see how much of the bone is affected by meningioma. Again, meningiomas affect the lining of the brain and therefore they're very close to the skull and the tumor can affect the skull bone as well. And geography may be used for evaluation of the brain vasculature and even occasionally we can use glue within the vessels to obstruct flow to the tumor specifically. So what are the treatment options that are commonly used for meningiomas? They are typically surgery, radiation therapy, or observation for and symptomatic management. So the small asymptomatic tumors remain untreated and typically monitored, especially in older patients. The mode of therapy also depends on the tumor size, location, rate of growth of the tumor, and really how accessible tumor is by a surgery. Let's talk about the surgical option. Surgery remains the primary option for these tumors. Since the meningioma originate from the surrounding brain membrane, they tend to be more clearly defined and easier to remove with less risks than other brain tumors. A craniotomy, um, which is an operation during which a part of the skull is temporarily removed to gain an access to the tumor is used to remove the tumor. After the tumor is removed, obviously the skull is replaced. The surgical specifics related to tumor are very varied, depends on the location of the tumor, if it's at the level of the skull base or at the outside level uh, or um, outside region of the skull. The um, risks of the surgery are infection, bleeding, very minor risk of stroke and associated neurological deficits. Um, surgery is a very complex process and there are certain considerations that are important to be remembered. Meningiomas at the base of the skull or near cranial nerves can be very difficult to remove and surgeon with this special expertise in this area is required to be able to remove the tumor effectively. So not every meningioma is the same. Those meningiomas that are entangling or pressurizing or compressing the important nerves at the skull base or the brain stem have to be removed by a surgeon who has significant expertise in skull base surgery. The risks associated with the removal of such tumor is significant. Traditional um, uh, modes of therapy such as external beam radiation therapy can be quite effective and um, um, a, a single beam of radiation, often five times per week or for several weeks, is used to uh, treat these tumors that are not amenable to surgery or, re or recurrent after initially surgical resection was performed. This um, radiation exposure to adjacent ex structures may cause vision loss or memory loss or even rarely stroke, but again, these risks are very minimal. Stratactic radiosurgery is another form of radiation where higher doses of radiation using multiple beams at a precise target during a single session as an outpatient are performed. This is very effective, especially for small meningiomas that are not deemed to be resected safely. 
adjacent structures um, are not prone to unintended damage from the radiation in this case because the focus of the radiation is very highly precise. There are other modalities medically that can manage the symptoms of meningiomas. We can use anti-seizure medications to prevent seizures and steroids or anti-inflammatory medications may be used to decrease brain swelling. But the as steroids and anti-inflammatory symptoms effects are relatively short-lived and can have associated adverse effects. What are the methods to reduce intracranial pressure for patients with increasing cranial pressure due to the blockage of the cerebral spinal fluid or brain fluid? The surgeon may install a thin tube called a shunt that drains the fluid from the brain into the abdomen and this plastic tube is left permanently. What is the prognosis associated with meningiomas? Again, it's very much dependent on the tumor grade, is it benign or non-aggressive, which most of these tumors are and are associated with excellent outcomes. The location and the size of the tumor are critical. If they are very superficial, these tumors can be very easily accessible and removed completely with excellent outcomes. And obviously patients age and overall health is important with younger patients faring much better than the older ones. So in summary, meningiomas are benign. They're very much well treated with surgery. The tumors that are at the base of skull have to be really managed with special expertise. That is the area that I am personally specialized in is resection of meningiomas at the level of skull base. And I'm more than happy to be um, of help and your surgeon um, anytime possible. Thank you.